Hey, everybody. Welcome to Season 2 of Radio Icebox, the first episode entitled Car Wrecks and Catapults. want to come on right here at the beginning and thank some of the wonderful people that make this show possible. Uh, our Patreon patron of the week is Debbie Griffith. Thank you so much, Debbie. Our members, those are members of the Icebox Radio Theater, Laurel and Janet Adams, we want to say thank you. Bob Arnold, thank you so much, Bob. And Karen and Tom Bates, helping us out with a membership. And we also are listing what we call super members this year. Those are folks who are both voting members of the Icebox Radio Theater and patrons on Patreon. And our super members are Susan Coley, thank you, Susan, and our good friend Dave Irwin. Dave, thank you so much for helping us out. More information on membership and becoming a patron at our website, just go to iceboxradio.org and click on support. And as always, you can really help us out by liking, sharing, and subscribing, especially on iTunes. Thank you so much for listening, and now, on with the show. How much time do we have? What do you mean, time? Well, uh, time until I'm on the air. What? I said, when do we start? You're on the air right now. No, I mean, okay. When do we start today? I mean, sorry. I'm saying you're on the air right now. I can't be on the air. Look, the little light's out. Uh, the light's broken, remember? No. Yes, yesterday after work, I told you... No, I don't think you... Oh, wait, I remember. Right. Okay. Hey, when are we going to get that fixed? JJ, you're on the air. I know, but we need to get the light fixed, because it's important. Right, and you're on the air right now. No. I can't be on the air, because... Good morning, you're listening to Radio Icebox. News, weather, and more coming up right after this. Fall is here, which means it's time to get ready for winter at Weird Sisters Flower and Garden. We have a complete collection of carnivorous plants sure to enliven any Halloween or Samhain party, plus blood mulch dug during a full moon for bushier, healthier wolfsbane in the spring. Fall is the time to get compost on those rose beds and make sure all curses are removed or at least dormant for the winter. Come see one of our in-house specialists today and get ready for the season of death at Weird Sisters Flower and Garden on Lake Street, across from Gray's Manor in Icebox. It is a little bit past the hour on Radio Icebox and time for news headlines. This is Sterling Mallory reporting. Fire struck the Wilson's chicken farm overnight, destroying three coops and leaving a fourth partially damaged. Area fire crews uh, responded in record time, but the lateness of the hour and the distance from the station to the event made containing the blaze very, very difficult. Fire Chief Ivan Sanderson would not speculate on the cause of the blaze, though he did hint that some of the mysterious lights in the sky over Big Space Rock Lake could be to blame. Sanderson went on to comment that in his opinion, this fire smelled more delicious than any fire his department has fought since the popcorn warehouse went up in 2001. The Wilsons are fully insured and made $300 extra last night serving chicken dinners to the neighbors, the fire crew, and several campers attracted by the aroma. Police were called to the normally quiet Pond Avenue neighborhood last night in response to a report of an illegal fight ring in the backyard of Einer and Polly Conrad's home. The Conrad's currently out of town attending a steampunk festival in Florida. Officers discovered a large crowd of onlookers in the Conrad's backyard placing illegal wagers on a bare-knuckled boxing match between two men dressed in full French-made costumes. Two other combatants waited nearby dressed as butlers. This is the first reported case of domestic violence in Icebox since 2012. Hi, it's Woody. I still got the guide service and bait shop, but I gotta come on here and tell you about it. Spend money on an ad or my wife will get mad at me next time we got a bad month. Gotta advertise, she keeps saying. So, 
come on out to Woody's. It's where it's always been, down there by the lake. Oh, the old Dutch guy come by finally, so we got some fresh chips in the rack up front. That's a reason to come down, I guess. Oh, uh, and a fellow landed one of them sea monsters last week. We got it in the jar. So you should really come down and check it out. Just a dollar a peak. Woody's Bait Shop and Guide Service on Beach Avenue in Icebox. Open alternating Tuesdays, 1 to 5. Come on down, or don't. It's up to you. Woody's! Time now to take a look at some uh, community events in the Icebox area. The Icebox Area Wicca Council will host their annual Take Back Sawin Festival at the First Evangelical Church of Presbyterian Lutheranism, Rhode Island Synod. Uh, that's in the Fellowship Hall on Halloween evening at 6 p.m. The council, which protests the crass commercialization of their most sacred holiday, will offer face painting, a pinata filled with candy, and a lecture about the history of the day during which they believe the veil between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. The festival will be over by 8 p.m. so the church can set up for their annual fundraiser, Spook House. This year's theme, Zombies with Chainsaws. Some programming notes now. Teen Poetry Corner has been rescheduled for next week due to creative differences between our host, Heather, and her mom. Heather would like to remind all our listeners that Teen Poetry Corner is for teens only and for certain older members of our community to stop sending in poems about ancient, grody stuff like Ario Speedwagon. In an unrelated note, we will be premiering a new program next week entitled Mom's Poetry Corner, so look forward to that. Okay, just about a minute to go here before play of the day. I uh, wanted to mention a, a subject that has come to our attention here at uh, Radio Icebox. We understand that a lot of you that work in International Falls or Fort Francis have started using cell phones, even though cell service is spotty at best here in town, and that some of you that live sort of in the Pond or Ocean Avenue areas right uh, right around downtown have discovered we have a wireless internet router here at Radio Icebox. How we came to uh, to get the internet here is a long story, one in which I'm not going to talk about now for fear that it might land someone in jail, uh, but it's true. We do have a wireless router, and what we'd like to do is to go ahead and leave that without a password protection, which we didn't put a password on initially because we didn't think anyone would know it was there. And offer everyone in town a chance to help us pay for this this wonderful service that we're now providing to a very small section of Icebox. Uh, and we're going to do it through a, a service called Audible. If you have a cell phone, you might have heard of this. It's it's books on tape, only there's no tape. It just it comes through the air. It's, it, it's, it's an audio book, okay? It's a wonderful service. And it's at uh, audible.com. And if, if you go to uh, audibletrial.com, dot com slash ibrt that's for icebox radio theater uh you can actually get a free uh, a free month of audible and that includes a, a free audio book it's a wonderful service and and it's a chance uh, to, you know, to try out this great new uh, great new thing if you've got the internet here in town and also to help uh, us here at radio icebox pay for all the great programs that you love every day right yeah so that's audibletrial.com slash ibrt uh, go ahead and try it out today, and we'll just keep that router going for you folks here downtown. Okay, Radio Icebox Playhouse is up next with an original story from International Falls author Owen Fitzstephan, written especially for Halloween, this entitled The Silence. That's Radio Icebox Playhouse, right after this. Hey, this is Bob Wilson. And this is Rita Wilson. I'm coming on here to let you know that Wilson's Chicken Farm is going through a change. That's right, Bob. Recent events have forced us to reconsider our career choices. And the fact that chicken farming is as hard as hell. Mm -hmm. And the only good chicken is one on a plate, so far as we are concerned. So we're proud to announce that Wilson's Chicken Farm is now Northland Open Pit Barbecue. That's right, Rita. We got chicken and all the trimmings for just $4.99, and we'll We'll add spare ribs once we catch that pig. No, it's kind of simple at the moment. Just a tent and plastic flatware. That's right. Uh, but we're going to get better. And shadowy government men in black always eat free. That's Northland Open Pit Barbecue out Old Space Rock Road down there east of town. If it's foul, we'll grill it. At Northland Open Pit Barbecue. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, happy Halloween, everyone. Hey, it's a spooky time for Radio Icebox Playhouse. We have a special holiday edition with about the scariest tale I've heard come across our airwaves in a very, very long time. And you know what's scary for a radio guy? Silence. And that's the title of our play. It's Silence on Radio Icebox. And how about now? Yes. You can hear that. Yes, that's what I said, just like the others. Hmm. Well, uh, your hearing is fine. That's not possible. There could be other explanations. Uh, I don't understand. It's my hearing that's affected. Uh, yes. It's my hearing. Why don't you describe for me what's happening again? But I already told you that... I I know, I know, and I apologize. I'm just an audiologist, and this is a little out of my field. What do you mean, out of your field? Could I just ask you to go through it again? You said this started about six months ago. That's right, right after we came back from vacation. And the deafness comes and goes? Not exactly. Not exactly. I don't entirely lose my hearing. It's like all the external sounds fade and and fade until they're gone. But I can still hear my own voice. That's perfectly normal. Vibrations from the vocal cords resonate within your skull. No, that's not what I heard. I heard my voice in my ears. And I heard the silence. I don't think I follow... You know what I mean. You, You must know. Silence. Real silence has a sound, like a blanket. No, it it doesn't. It's the absence of sound. Our minds take over, fill in the blanks with sounds because we are so used to hearing things. People claim to be able to hear their own heartbeats or the air moving in and out of their lungs. But that's just an auditory hallucination. But I can hear it. The silence. You can hear silence. Well, I don't know how else to describe it. It's like a fog. It's like something's creeping into the room slowly. I can still see people. I can see their lips move. I can set a coffee mug down so that I know it'll make noise. I even know what the noise will sound like, but I I can't hear it. It's like... It's like a predator. A what? I feel like the silence is coming to get me. Every time, it it seems to get a little closer to completely enveloping me. And and then at the last moment, just when I can feel it wrapping around my throat, it recedes, and my hearing comes back. I can order some more tests, but... Well, then uh, shouldn't we do that? But I think it would be best to try some other avenues first. What avenues? Sybil. My preliminary test indicates that your ears are completely healthy. You have an excellent range, the nerves all appear to be undamaged, and there's no sign of an infection. Before I run any more tests, I want you to see a specialist. You are the specialist. Everyone says you're the best. Here's her card. A psychologist? I can refer you. I'm pretty sure the first consultation will be covered by your insurance. Well, that's not the point. I'm losing my hearing, not my mind. Yes, but your hearing appears to be fine. I can find nothing physically wrong with you there. So I must be crazy. This has nothing to do with insanity. It's that I think it's time to consider the possibility that there is a psychological reason behind your symptoms. (sighs) Thank you for your time, Doctor. I know how valuable it must be. Sybil, please, consider this. We just want you to get better. Right. Uh, 
I'm home. In here. I brought Chinese. Yeah, yeah whatever. Everything okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, what do you have? You just you don't move since I well, left. I washed, I washed the car like you asked, and, uh, and I ran the dishwasher. Um, I'll wash your car tomorrow. That, that's not the point. Hey, it's my day off, remember? My weekend is Tuesday and Wednesday this week. But to sit here playing video games the whole day? What else do you want me to do? Well, I don't know. Just, I don't know. You know, it's, it's my job pays for this place, and the health insurance which pays your bills. What did that guy say, by the way? What? Doctor, what did he say? Would you... Would you turn that off? What'd the guy say? Doesn't it ruin your ears with the volume that loud? What did the guy say? I don't even see why you need the sound. All you need is the picture to play that stupid... Sybil! Game. What did the audiologist say? I'll get dinner. Can we eat at the dining room table, please? What did he say? I'll tell you at dinner. Come on. Bobby! No, no, no. I know this attitude. You're going to screw around and screw around and not tell me anything because the guy told you something you didn't want to hear. So you won't peck me until I leave you alone or maybe just leave, right? Anything. So you don't have to answer my questions. Just bring the damn dinner on in here. How am I supposed to tell you anything with that game blaring? You want to tell me something now? If you stop acting like a child. I'm the child. You're the one playing games all day. No, you know what? I am not taking the bait this time. That doctor, he said something to you, didn't he? Something you didn't like. He's a quack. He better not be with what we're paying him. Is all you ever think about money? Come on, Sybil, what happened? Nothing. Come on. Nothing! He said it was an infection. You know, you were the worst liar on the planet. What did he say? He said it was mental, didn't he? No, he did not. Yes, he did. I can see it in your eyes. He didn't. He never said that. I got it. He referred you to a shrink. Yeah, that's it. Oh, it's not... Don't, e don't, don't. Don't even bother. He's a quack. He couldn't do his job and figure out what's wrong with me, so he just sent me away. Uh-huh. I have done research on this. Half an hour on the internet, and your research is why you wanted to go see this guy to begin with. I just need to find another specialist. Oh, no, no way. What? And forget about that shrink, too. You have spent enough of my money on this BS. What? I said it was all in your head six months ago, but you wouldn't listen, and it's cost us a couple of grand. Not including that fancy quack you saw today. I'm done, all right? No more doctors. If you want to see the shrink, sell one of those stupid stories you're always talking about and pay for it yourself. What are you saying? I think I'm being pretty clear. No. No, you don't do this. People in a relationship don't do this. I'm sick, Bobby. I'm sick. So I have to help. Yes! Yes, you do! Does that mean I have to do everything you want? Your every little wish? If it makes me feel better if, that... If it makes you better. Oh. Maybe what you need isn't another trip to the doctor. Maybe what you need is a change of pace, huh? Maybe you should give up this stupid dream of being a writer and get a damn job. Become productive for a change. I am productive. Oh, yes, the blog. How much money is that bringing in, by the way? I don't know what you expect me to I possibly... I expect you to grow up. You write about this this paranormal crap, and now it's it's gotten into your head. No. It has, Sybil. Face it. I read your last one, you know, the silence creeping in like a fog. Don't... Don't take it out of context. I mean to get you... Shut up! You don't understand. I understand that I married a charmingly flaky girl who's now gone completely off the deep end. You write about monsters and ghosts and crap and couldn't make a dime at it, so you created your own monster. Oh, and a scary one it is, too. The silence. Shut up. You know, I wish, I wish you had shown even half an ounce of business sense in the past, because that way I could believe you dreamed this thing up as a publicity stunt. It would have been awesome, by the way. The morons who like this stuff would have lapped it up. But considering how completely impractical you are, in all things, there's no way you dreamed it up. You really think the silence is coming to get you. And that makes you the crazy one. Shut up! You don't understand. I understand that if you yell at me like that again, you'll be out on your ass. It's just my hearing. That's all it really? is. Really? Because the blog doesn't read that way. It, it's just my hearing. Sure. Sure it is. I mean, what you wrote was just for the rubes, right? What? <laughs> oh my god. You are a piece of work. Have you forgotten how you ended the last blog? Here, here, here hang on, I got it on my laptop. Oh, 
No, no, wait. I, I really... feel the floating into the room like a malignant <sighs> fog. I can feel it wrap around my arms, my legs, my throat. This, this silence, this silence is a living thing, an intelligence, and I know what it wants from me. It wants me to suffocate. My only defense is to visit doctors and pretend the problem is in my hearing, but even that is no longer enough. Even my husband has begun to suspect. That's, that's out of context. You really believe the boogeyman is coming to get you, don't you? All those years of writing about scary monsters, it's finally rotted your brain. You don't understand. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to close down that blog, understand? You're going to quit writing about silent monsters or any silly crap like that and get yourself a job, a real job. You can type? Good. Go for data entry. That'll beat the whimsy right out of your soul because I've had enough, Sybil. I've had it up to here with you and your BS. You are not sick. You are not crazy. You just got cooped up in here too long without doing anything, and you popped a gasket in your head. That's all. No. Spend some time out here in the real world. It'll set you right. The only thing that can set you right. And I'm not talking someday or soon. Now. Oh. Hey. Oh, my God. Hey. Oh. Hey, Kate, what, what's wrong with you? Are you listening to me, Sybil? Oh, thank God. What? What? What, what is it? You're back. I can hear you. What is wrong with you? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do anything you say. Just don't leave me. Let go of me. It's getting worse, Bobby. It's getting worse. What are you talking the about? The silence. It's not just that I can't hear. It wants me. It wants to take me. Well, then go with it, you crazy bitch, because I want a divorce. Sorry, Lou. What? You've been nursing that cup of coffee for a long time. You know, order dinner? Uh, maybe later. Sweetheart, you, you gotta eat. Oh, I had a big lunch. No, you, you don't understand. That stool is for paying customers. What? C- customers. It's for paying customers. I come in here every day. That's right, and you order tea, and occasionally a salad, and you take up that stool for eight hours. I, I I don't understand. This diner's a business. No, no, I I mean I don't understand. I thought we were friends. Sure, we're we're friends. I'm friends with all my regulars. No sense going into the restaurant business unless you want to make friends, right? But it's still a business, and you're still well, you're still taking up that stool. There's three other stools available. You don't need this one. Look, Sybil... Uh, just, I... j- j- just let me finish this paragraph. You always say that, and then you're here for another hour. Ten minutes. You're a writer. Don't you think she'd be at the, I don't know, the library or something? I can't go to the library. What's that? I said I can't go to the library. It's too quiet there. Well, how about home, then? You do have an apartment or something, right? Right? Well, yes. I'm not homeless. Why, am I stinking up your diner? Well, not exactly. What? There have been complaints. What? Who? Customers. People who ask me who the woman with the laptop is, and I tell them. If you looked up your blog and, you know, word gets around. Word about what? I don't understand. Blog. It makes people uncomfortable. All that paranormal crap and all that stuff about your husband. Ex-husband. Not according to last week's entry. What? Sweetheart, you are too dumb to live in the 21st century. You pour all this personal crap in your blog, and then you're surprised when people know your business. Last week, in the blog, you wrote they won't sign the divorce papers, remember? I forgot. And you called him some choice names, even though you signed a prenup and all he's asking is for you to go by it. Things have changed. I have medical bills. Oh, yeah, your hearing problem that isn't. Lou, just let me stay here. I'm sorry, Sybil. No. I can't. I I don't want to go home. I'm sorry, but 
I got regulars who tell me they won't come in no more if they see you sitting here. You creep people out. Just go home. Forget what I said. You can come back, just not today. Go home. I can't go there. Why? The silence. All right, now you're creeping me out. You don't understand. If I'm alone, it'll come. Then go to someplace else. Hell, go to Denny's. They don't care. You can sit there all night. Sybil? They kicked me out of there. Well, then you can certainly understand how I have to ask you to leave now. Oh, Lou, Get help, all right? Go get help. You're not right in the head. You put crazy thoughts into that blog and it freaks people out. Don't make me go, Lou. Just go home. Get some sleep. You'll feel better. Lou, if you just... I'll see you around, ma'am. You take care now. You take care. Yeah? It's me. It's a cell phone, Sybil. I know it was you. Uh, oh, right. Th- thanks for picking up. Yeah, well, what do you want? It's over. What's over? Everything. You're right. My imagination ran away with me. I, I, I've lost control over everything. Now I want... I want to come home. <sighs> Sybil, I don't know. I've closed down the blog. What? I closed down the blog. Check the link. It's dead. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay. Well? Yeah, yeah. You you did. I, I, I'll get a job. I'll quit wasting money and time and everything. I'll do whatever you want, but I need to come home. Do you still believe in the silence? Sybil? No. No, I don't. If you come back, I never expect to hear about silence ever again, okay? And none of the other stuff. No boogeyman, no weirdness. I promise, I promise, no weirdness. Can you come and get me? I... I guess, but it'll be a few minutes, okay? It's okay. Uh, I'll just sit quietly. Okay. Be there in 20. Twenty minutes. That should be enough time. To whom it may concern, I'm writing this final blog entry on hard copy because I promised my husband I'd take down my blog. But I hope someone who finds this will post it because I know people will want to know the end of the story. The blog is intact. I just went to my domain control panel and paused it. The password is 433-MOTO to anyone who wants to bring the blog back up and finish the story. I'll, I'll be dead in, in a matter of minutes. I, I can already hear the sounds around me start to fade. I chose this flop house because it has no insulation and it's in a bad part of town. Someone's always yelling, sirens are always screaming. It was just what I wanted. But I I don't want it anymore. I don't want to fight this. Not now. Everyone, Everyone thinks I'm crazy, but I want them to know what happened. In a little while, I will be no more. I don't know if my body will be left behind or or it too will disappear, but I know that I will be gone. And I want this last blog entry to be the record of my death. Already I can hear the sounds fading. 
the silence creeping in. I can hear my heart beat in my ears, the air moving in and out of my lungs. Soon that's all I'll hear. But when you find this, you'll know I was lucid to the end. I knew where I was and what I was doing. There was no suicide. There was no one in here with me. I was just taken. In a minute, I'm going to put down this pen and start screaming. I already feel like I know what will happen. The silence will gather up my voice along with all the other sounds and and I'll be gone. But this way, people might hear. People might come and find this writing and know what really happened. The silence is close to me now. I feel sleepy. I feel frightened. It's time to go. And to my husband, Bobby, I say this. I told you so. And I'm sorry. Silence was written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. The characters in order of appearance, James Yunt portrayed the doctor. Vicki Olson was Sybil. Jeffrey Adams played Bobby. And Justin Kapla was Lou. Radio Icebox will be back with the rest of the story right after this. It can be in the sound of the orchestra preparing. Or in the sound of a sculptor working in stone. Or even in the sound of laughter from inside a theater. It is the sound of art being created. And for over three decades, the sound of art being created has rung loud and clear in northeastern Minnesota. The Arrowhead Regional Arts Council has been encouraging local arts development in northeastern Minnesota through grants and services for over 35 years. Every year, they give out more than half a million dollars to local artists and arts organizations, and that helps create $40 million in revenue and jobs created. To find out more about our arts programs or how you can get involved, visit aracouncil.org. The Arrowhead Regional Arts Council, where the arts flourish, you thrive. System initiated. Yeah. Evening, Deej. Good evening, JJ. Report. All systems reporting functioning within standard parameters. Shall I initiate the overnight programming playlist Tuesday one? Oh, yes, please. I'll be back for the morning show at 6 a.m. I know, JJ. I am intelligent, if only artificially so. Still makes you the smartest person in the building, most likely. Yes, I know. Uh, what? One moment, the record's concluding. I'll leave you to it then. All right, cats and kittens, this is DJ Skynet with stacks and stacks of wax and wax. Here's a big hit you'll all enjoy. DJ, spin that shit. But we can't go that way, can we? We have no choice. This serum has to get to the village right away. No, 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 that's not quite right. Oh, okay, then how do you want it to go? Glad you could join us at last. I'm sorry I had to wrap up tonight's show before beginning rehearsals on the next one. Yeah, how's Deej doing? Great, thank you so much, Cody. He still needs a little more personality, but I think the coding is all right. How did it all sound tonight? 
Fine. It's okay? Yeah, it, it's fine. What's all this about now? Oh, nothing. We just weren't sure tonight's play was going to play on the air all right. Oh, is that the Fitzstephen? Uh, the silence, yes. Oh. What? What's wrong? Nothing. Dr. Graves, what is wrong? Nothing. It's just some of us write Halloween plays with actual monsters in them. I thought it was quite effective. With all due respect, Barbara, you are not an expert on terror. You haven't been frightened by anything since 1997. Mm, point taken. She's pretty good at inflicting it, though. What's that? Nothing. Were we going to rehearse? That was my hope, yes. The dungeon scene. Whatever, you're the director. Ah. Dr. Graves? Is everything okay? Oh, everything is fine. As fine as it can be when my play is passed over for Halloween. The what? What? That's not true. Yes, it is. What? You chose the silence for tonight. Dr. Graves got moved to tomorrow. Right. Well, okay, okay yes. I, I guess I did do that. Your admission is of little comfort. I worked for months on that play. So can we get on with rehearsing it, please? I don't see the point. Halloween will be passed by by the time we air it. Yes, but we're doing horror all this month. And by the time we air my play, it will be next month. Well, okay, t technically, but that's After not... After all we've been through, J.J., you couldn't do my play on All Hallows' Eve? You couldn't provide me with that one small encouragement? Well, sort of. What do you mean, sort of? Uh, Cody will explain. Cody? Sure, boss. Dr. Graves... J.J. didn't really think about how you would feel when your play didn't get the coveted Halloween time slot. And he's just now realizing how much it meant to you. So, now he's desperately treading water and trying to figure out how to save face and calm you down. And he got desperate enough to try to pawn the explanation off on me. I see. On second thought, Cody will not explain. Too late. Already did. Would it be possible to rehearse this scene so that the play will be ready to perform whenever it is aired? Oh, fine. I don't care anymore. Well, that's not a healthy attitude. I'm sorry, Barbara, but I simply don't. Air it today, air it tomorrow, air it on doomsday. I don't care. Nothing about radio matters anymore. Good heavens, what was all that about? Oh, should I go after him? No, he'll be fine. You're sure? Yes, other than I've never seen him act that way, and I'm really worried about him. Well, what made you say he was fine, then? The knowledge that even if I wanted to go after him, Barb wouldn't let me, because this is supposed to be a rehearsal, and she'd kill one or both of us if we tried to leave. That's true. So what you're saying is I don't need to go find Dr. Graves and apologize. You don't need to go find Dr. Graves and apologize yet. Ah. It isn't fair. It simply isn't fair. Oh, Fitzstephen is all right, if you like that kind of thing. But I live in Icebox. Community should count for something. I mean, it's not like opportunities like that just jump out at you. Good heavens! <laughs> uh, are you all right? Excuse me. Uh, are you all right? Uh, are you all right? You hit me with your car. I'm so terribly sorry. I was ill-focused on my motoring. What? My play wasn't selected for Halloween. So you hit me. I didn't see you. Oh, okay. Well, have a good night. Wait! We must take you to the hospital. Why? Well, I'm assuming you're injured. I must have been going 30 miles an hour. I'll be all right. But, um, your neck... Oh, is it crooked? It does that. Your head is tilted at a 90-degree angle. Hang on. Ah. Oh, good heavens. Well, how's that? It's, um, it's better. Good. Well, good night. Wait. Who, who are you? I, I mean, I know everyone in town, and I've never seen you before. Oh, passing through is all. Well, uh, do you need a place to stay? Some food? I feel I owe you a debt. It's all right. I'll just keep along. Well, uh, I'm sorry again. It's all right. Say. Yes? 
Could you tell me... Anything. Anything at all. Could you tell me what town this is? Of course. This is Icebox. What was that that you said? I said the town is Icebox. Minnesota. You're at the very top of the country. Canada is just across the lake. Icebox, Minnesota? Yes, that's right. Well, maybe you could show me. I mean, is there a diner somewhere in town? Somewhere I could get some food? Of course. The busy bee right downtown. I'll drive you there. Well, is your car all right to drive? Of course. I mean, it wasn't like I hit a tree. (laughs) Oh, good heavens. What? What's wrong? Look at that dent. It's as if I did hit a tree. Are you made of stone, sir? Well, I don't think so. What? Do you think it'll drive all right? I suppose. At least as far as the busy bee. There's a garage right next door. I see. Come, let's go. So, uh, just passing through? Yes. My name is Graves. Welcome to Icebox. Thank you. So, uh, what should I call you? Me? Oh, you can call me Mr. Rogers. This has been Radio Icebox Season 2, Episode 1, Car Wrecks and Catapults, featuring Jeffrey Adams as J.J., Cody Boyer as Cody, Douglas Screef was Dr. Graves, Victoria Olson played Barb, and Justin Kapla was Mr. Rogers. The air check segment that led off our show, as well as the rest of our story, was written and directed by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from the Freesound Project at freesound.org. The Radio Icebox Playhouse theme is Monkeys Spinning Monkeys by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com, licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. Radio Icebox Season 2 is made possible in part by the voters of Minnesota through a grant from the Arrowhead Regional Arts Council, thanks to appropriations from the Minnesota State Legislature's General and Arts and Cultural Heritage Funds. (laughs) 